What's up, fellas? Uh, today is my rest day, so I felt inclined to make a video talking about what I think you should do with your rest days and what I think you should not do with your rest days, including common mistakes I see um, where people are doing the wrong things on the rest day, they come into training the next day, uh, and even though they took a, the day off prior, they don't feel any stronger. If anything, they feel worn down and weak, uh, when really you should feel noticeably stronger the day after you've taken one of your rest days through the week. Uh, so the first thing we're going to touch on is the simplest, and that's why we're getting it out of the way first and that's going to be your hydration. Uh, that's something I've been screaming from the rooftops for about forever now um, about how important hydration is and a lot of people will have a uh, roughly standardized amount of water that they drink on their training days whether that be you track how many times you go through a smaller water bottle, you have a big water bottle, um, you go through a gallon jug of water a day or you have some other means of roughly estimating how much water you're drinking. Um, they'll just throw that out the window and they won't do it on the rest day because they don't have training to incentivize uh, hydrating themselves. You know, they know there's no performance that's going to suffer uh, so they won't drink as much water as they normally drink and uh, usually that comes back to bite you when you don't feel very strong the next day and you can't figure out why um, that certainly can be a contributing factor and the other problem is that you don't have timing cues right that might be associated with training maybe you uh, say oh I need to finish this before I go to the gym every day uh, like a certain large water bottle uh, well if you're not going to the gym that day you don't have those timing cues associated with getting that water down so this is the easiest one to fix it's just making sure you drink the same amount of water on your uh, on your rest days that you do on your training days uh, you're gonna be excreting a little bit less water without your training sessions you're gonna be sweating a little bit less uh, pretty likely uh, but I wouldn't take any out of your water I would just keep that intake the same you know keep it simple stupid the old kiss, kiss principle um, so that one's relatively simple. Next, we're gonna to touch on something that kind of has more options, right? That's what do we do with our food? First and foremost, you need to be following a structured diet on your rest days. Lots of people will follow, like whether it's intentional or not, or just the fact that they need to fit certain meals into certain times, uh, their diet's pretty standardized on their training days and then super unstandardized on their rest days. With that which gets tracked gets improved, we need to kind of you know, continue our diet on our off day, but there might be some small changes we make to it. So if you have a standardized diet, uh, we're gonna keep that roughly the, the number of meals, what the meals are cons like, what makes up the meals. Maybe you can include a cheat meal on your off days if you like that, but what makes up the meals should also stay the same on your uh, rest days as well as how many meals you're eating. Uh, so if you're someone who's a bit overweight and is trying to gradually lose weight uh, while continuing to increase your strength rather than kind of doing a suicide cut, a very strong option that you have is taking a little bit of carbs out of your rest day because we're not gonna necessarily uh, need those extra carbohydrates because we don't have any performance to fuel per se. Uh, that being said, the big mistake that people will make here is they'll take out too many carbs. Uh, that's one of the most common mistakes I see is under eating on the rest days. Um, so that way we're not really taking advantage of that time away from training to heal up because we're not providing our body with the resources needed to heal up. But if you're someone who's conscious of your body fat percentage, you're trying to bring it down or you're trying to stay relatively lean, um, taking some carbs, some carbs away from your, uh, your off day can be a very good option for you. Uh, the one I'm going to recommend to most people, the, the preferred option as it's the simplest, is to find a diet and keep it standardized whether it's a training day or a non-training day. This is the easiest way to make sure everything is consistent. It's the easiest way to stay in a routine. It doesn't require any extra thought and it's very simple to trial and error. You say, hey, I'm not losing weight anymore. I take a little bit of carbs away from every day. You don't have to do any math with figuring out, okay, well, if I rest every third day and I take away carbs only on those third days, what does my week to week caloric surplus deficit look like? You don't have to do that and that's probably gonna be the best option for most of you. You don't need to take this more you know, carb cycling heavy approach. It's not gonna make some nine like huge difference as far as your body composition. If you're intelligent with how you structure a same macros everyday diet, uh, you can get the job done and stay in good condition if that is your goal. So that's what I'm gonna to recommend to most people. I think the biggest error I see is people uh, severely under eating on the rest days and then being confused why they don't feel any more recovered uh, the following day because you need to have the resources to do so. And then the other option you have, especially if you're someone who has a really hard time putting on weight, is actually eating a bit more on your rest days, whether that be taking the cheat, cheat meal at the end of the day that I mentioned the other day, or taking a cheat meal for breakfast. Um, that could be an easy way to slip in some calories and then eating the rest of the day on diet and or it could be just bumping your carbs per meal. Uh, this is something that's relatively helpful if you have a heavy training session the next day is if you have been eating this, you know, let's say you're not, you're maintaining, right? You've been eating a roughly isochloric diet and you add in some uh, carbs to that 
rest day, that next day you're going to feel noticeably stronger in the gym pretty consistently if you take a higher calorie day the day before. Even if you're bulking and you have a big session, this is an option, um, though I might not recommend this for someone who's very conscious of their body fat percentage. But that's kind of how the nutrition might break down. hope I didn't babble too much there. Um, the next thing we're going to touch on is a relatively simple one. That's mobility. Um, I generally speaking, I'm kind of a fan of spacing out our stimuli evenly every day rather than uh, with training, right? We don't want to bury ourselves one day, wait a week, bury ourselves again. Um, generally speaking, the evidence kind of supports that burying ourselves a little bit less and doing it twice as often uh, generally is better. And I take the same approach to my mobility. So rather than doing a really long, complex mobility routine, uh, rather you boil down your mobility routine to the simplest, quickest thing you can and do it daily rather than have like a really long one that you do every off day. Um, so then continuing that train of thought, we would do the same mobility routine that if you have one, I would do that on your off day, the same as you would on a training day. And if that's not enough to get more mobile, what you need to do is increase your daily increment of stretching, not necessarily just stretch a shit ton on that rest day. Um, that would be my general approach to that. For those of you that do mobility, for those of you that don't, probably not an issue. Um, and then the next thing is our activity level. If we have a standard number of steps we take per day, um, we're going to want to keep that the same. This is one of the other biggest errors I see people make is they think, oh, I need to recover. That means I'm going to sit on the couch, I'm going to eat, and I'm going to recover all day and my body's going to you know, dedicate all of its resources to recovery. Well, the lymphatic fluid system doesn't have a pump, right? So the um, exercise byproducts that build up in our muscle and the muscular damage uh, that is caused by training that causes soreness. Uh, the byproducts are not going to get pumped out without muscular contraction. So we need to move to pump out uh, the exercise byproducts. And we also need to move to stimulate a greater amount of blood flow to the muscles to bring the nutrients that you ate on that rest day to the muscles in greater quantities. Uh, so generally speaking, if you do nothing all day, you wake up the next day and you don't feel very recovered at all. You feel stiff as shit. Uh, and if you do low scale exercise, such as walking, you are driving the blood with those nutrients that you ate all day to the muscles. You're pumping out any uh, exercise byproducts that's been built up within the muscles and you're going to feel a hell of a lot better and more recovered the next day so this whole uh, bed rest is ideal it's kind of an old myth in my opinion you know we want to do a more active recovery we don't want to go and kill ourselves to the point where it's no longer considered a rest day but we want to do enough to stimulate blood flow so if you're someone who takes a decent number of steps per day um, anywhere between seven and 10,000, then all we need to do is probably just match that uh, on our rest day and that'll do a pretty damn good job of making sure that we're moving around. If you're someone who's a little bit more sedentary, um, I would go out of your way to take an extra walk or two during your rest day and actually take more steps on your rest days. Highly recommend that, it's a good habit. And the times in my life where I've been very busy and my step count has been rather low, uh, the biggest thing I could do is on my rest days, making sure that step count comes up a little bit more than what it was. Uh, that's been always very beneficial for me and I'm sure that you guys will find it beneficial too if you're someone who's relatively sedentary. Uh, in a perfect world, you get your step count up every day, but if you're gonna pick select days to make sure you make time to go on a walk, it'll be your rest days. Uh, and then the final thing is if you're a real gym rat and you want to go into the gym and do something, you might be, Sam, well, you said stimulating blood flow is important. What about a recovery workout where I go in and I lift, you know, we select lifts to stimulate blood flow and recover better. Um, well, if you're the kind of gym guy who's a real gym rat and wants to come in on every single day, you're also the kind of guy who really likes to progressively overload and probably likes to work hard. Uh, and unfortunately, if you go in and you lift weights, um, you're going to try to overload it. You're going to try to work hard and you're probably going to overdo it. And the session is no longer going to be a recovery session. It's just a shitty training session and you're not going to be getting the amount of recovery that your program probably is calling for. Uh, this is a mistake that I have made probably no less than 20 times is thinking that I can get away with lifting every day if I make them recovery workouts and then lo and behold, two weeks in, I've kind of overloaded all my shit and then suddenly it's just another training session and I'm chronically under recovering. Um, so probably if you're the kind of guy who wants to come in and do active recovery, you're probably gonna overdo it, which is why I generally recommend that if you are uh, dead set on coming into the gym on a rest day just to keep the habit going you just like being in the gym uh, to make a conditioning session rather than an active recovery session whether it be the wind bike the rower the ski erg um, more inclined walking, the elliptical, anything that's low impact doing just some conditioning and getting yourself in good shape is another thing that can 
A, you know that that conditioning work is going to stimulate blood flow, just the same as the walking we talked about earlier. So it'll be active recovery in that regard. But also your recovery capabilities and your recovery speed are much faster when you're in good cardiovascular shape. So building those conditioning sessions into your rest days uh, will also make it so you recover between your training sessions better, even in the absence of rest days, just by being in good shape. So that would be my uh, practical application. Is if you if you really want to come into the gym. Make it a conditioning session and tell yourself it's a conditioning session rather than telling yourself it's an active recovery session because you're going to overdo it. Uh, that's kind of all of my notes. I hope I didn't babble too much. Uh, thank you guys as always for watching my video. Uh, please let me know if you have any requests for videos, kinds of videos, uh, series, anything like that. I'm still working on getting you know, this whole thing figured out. I'm very new to it. Thank you for watching my video.